Oh, nice striper. This is Dan Hernandez welcoming you to this week's episode of Sport Fishing. Well, we're back up in Emeryville. In today's episode, we'll be staying inside San Francisco Bay looking for stripers and halibut. We'll be fishing with Jay and the crew aboard the new Huck Finn, so stay tuned for this week's exciting episode of Sport Fishing. Welcome to Sport Fishing with Dan Hernandez. This week's episode of Sport Fishing is brought to you by Bradley Smokers, when you only want the very best. Magic Metal Jigs and Bucktail Jigs. By Game Saver. Preserve your fish, use a Game Saver. And by Dan Hernandez Dipping Sauces and Fish Batter. Captain Jay and Jay, where exactly are we fishing right now? Uh, right now we're just fishing east of Southampton, Shoal. A big flat area. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people they call it Berkeley Flats. Yeah. And this is Ryan. He just caught the fish. Yeah. Nice halibut. Nice halibut. Yeah. Your first one for today? This is my second one. Yeah. Second one today. Yeah. yeah. Cool. much if uh, the viewers want to look for good spots uh, they want to look for contour lines uh, from deep to shallow uh, ledges with bait um, around around uh, piers uh, and then there's sometimes where it's just uh, in the shallow waters where there's a lot of bait a lot of feed um, that's more or less what, what we look for. <clears throat> if there's bait and there's structure, a lot of times there's the fish. Good. Okay, I got a fish going right now. Let's see what I got. It's not acting like a big fish. Hopefully it's a hell of it. There it is. Shark. Another exotic. Here's the fish I just caught. It's a little shark. What kind of shark is this fish? A uh, sand shark. A little sand shark? Uh, go down one more time for him. Go right on this. Nope, oh, not quite that far. <laughs> Next spot's gonna be a rocky bottom spot, guys. Uh, it's basically a, a, 
a big uh, shelf. We're going to start off in about 40 feet of water, and then we're going to come up over a 15-foot high spot. It's, it's rocky the whole way. Basically, uh, as Jay slows down, you want to go ahead and get your bait on and get him ready. Get him over the side. It's a very short drift. Uh, if you wait for Jay to say, okay, let him go, and you don't have your bait on yet, by the time you get your bait to the bottom, the drift's already over. Okay, so go ahead and get your bait on, lower it over the side, you know, down about six inches. When Jay says let him go, just freeze pull all the way down to the bottom. As soon as you feel that sinker tap, you want to take about four to five cranks up off the bottom. Okay, uh, raise and lower your rod tip about six inches. Um, and every time you feel that sinker tap, you want to take a couple turns, a couple turns off the bottom. Okay, so basically you just want that anchovy suspended up off the bottom the whole time as we come up to shelf. Okay. That's just had a little rockfish. Super got us over that rocky area. This guy will taste delicious steam. Little rockfish steamed up, just delicious. Um, Skipper just made a move, and what, what we're doing is we're going on the edge of this big rocky area. So uh, the deckhand gave us a little lecture about how to work this area. And uh, once we get on the spot, you have to grind up, grind up. We're just going over the spot so fast. And there's a lot of striped bass on this, on this spot. And there's some rockfish. We haven't got any halibut here yet, but a uh, bunch of stripers. But this is just a little, little bonus fish. And today's June 1st, so it's the opening of rockfish season. So we'll be able to keep this guy. So we're gonna take a little break from the action right now. And we'll go to the tackle box while the skipper's here repositioning the boat. And we'll show you how we're rigging for fishing here out of Emeryville or the new Huck Fin here in San Francisco yeah. Bay. We'll be right back. This week, the Tackle Box is brought to you by Cabela, America's foremost outfit. This week in the Tackle Box, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what we're doing today. Now, we're still drifting up here, looking for halibut, looking for stripers. A lot of stripers here in the Bay Area. And there's a number of ways you can catch them. We're catching them today, drifting a lot using live bait and using different rigs, Carolina rigs, slider rigs. But another technique that works really good for the stripers and also for the halibut is to use a bucktail. This is a B-52 bucktail, very simple jig to use. All you're going to do when you're halibut fishing, get to the bottom, lift it up off the bottom a little bit and let it fall down. You always want to be moving it, you always want to be working it, you always want to feel contact with that. As we drift into areas where the stripers are, lots of times that's over rock piles and um, hard objects, maybe a wreck down there or something like that. What you want to do is hit that, jerk it up and down a few times, and then let it fall right back down. Lots of times the stripers will be holding right over these big rock piles or this hard structure. So you want to get that bait over it and drop it straight down over it, right over it, and drop it down. If you're not sure what bucktails look like in the stores, these are the B-52 bucktails. You can find them at all your local tackle stores and on our website. As far as stripers, I would really suggest a white or a red and white color. This works out really good for stripers. For halibut, they'll hit anything on the bottom. Just got to get in front of them, agitate them a little bit with it, and they'll strike it. Well, let's get back on the water and show you more exciting action right here on Sport Fishing.
We're gonna be using live anchovies for bait today. Uh, when you guys are trying to catch your bait, you want to put your hand in the tank really slow. Kind of come underneath them. I usually kind of corral them on over to one side. And a lot of times they'll swim right into your hand. Okay, if you're trying to grab at them from the top, they're a lot quicker than you are and you'll just end up damaging a lot of bait. They'll keep squirting away from you. When you're holding your bait, you want to hold it really delicately. Uh, basically just pinching its gill plates between my middle finger and uh, my thumb there and you want to support the back of its head uh, with your index finger okay that way when you drive that hook through you're not going to snap its neck okay so you want to hold the back of its head hook him right in the corner of the bottom jaw and come straight up through the tip of the nose in front of the eyeballs okay you want to make sure you catch that bottom lip it'll pin their mouth shut and make sure that you're in front of the eyeballs. If you go between the eyes, you're gonna catch the brain and kill your bait. If you'll look real closely, there's a clear pocket in front of the eyeballs. That's right where you want that hook to be. Uh, it's primarily gonna be all sandy bottom where we're gonna be fishing today. You guys wanna let out just enough line so that your sinker's tapping along the bottom. Go ahead and remember to keep your thumb on the spool. Send it all the way on down till you feel that sinker tap. Um, let out an extra couple feet of line and uh, you should see some kind of a rhythm to your rod tip as that sinker's tapping along. Uh, should look something like this. Okay, 90% of the fish are caught in the rod holder. Okay, you don't have to hold on to your rod. Um, basically, your rod's gonna be in the rod holder. It'll be tapping along just like this. When that fish hits on the initial bite, they usually jar it. It's pretty obvious on a big fish. It'll be something out of rhythm. And hopefully your rod's gonna start to load up from the weight of the fish. Uh, when it looks about like that, with your rod still in the rod holder, you just come up on your rod and take about four or five cranks on the handle to set that hook. Uh, you don't want to grab your rod and set the hook, uh, especially on that initial bite. You want to give them a little bit of time to load up on your rod. So you just come up on your rod, take about four or five cranks. When you feel your rod load up, you feel the fish coming up off the bottom, you just slow down and go easy by easy. Um, you just want to take your time. You don't want to pump your rod a whole lot. The harder you pull on the halibut, the more angry they get about the whole situation and the harder they pull back on you, okay? So basically, you just go slow and steady and a lot of times they'll cruise right on up. Uh, when you see your three-way swivel, you know you're getting close to the fish, uh, slow down and make sure you don't lift his head out of the water. They're obviously not used to seeing daylight. They'll start thrashing on you and there's a good chance they'll get away. But if you just leave them down about six inches to a foot, a lot of times they'll stay asleep and you can just cruise them right on into the net before they know what's going on. The Bob just got. Not bad. Nice. Last year you're out with us, we're catching rockfish, sling cuds. And today we're back out on the new hook fin and, and we're fishing inside the bay. The earlier spot we were fishing was a high spot with the rocks, there was a lot of stripers there. Now we're back in the flats, uh, the Berkeley Flats, and we're drifting for halibut. There's still stripers around here too, but congratulations. Thank you. All right, well, we're going to take a little break from the action right now. We're going to go to the galley. We're going to show you how to cook up a delicious halibut like this. This week, the galley is brought to you by Dan Hernandez Dipping Sauces and Fish Batters. Look for them in your local supermarkets. This week in the galley, I'm going to cook you up one of the halibut that we're catching this week's episode up in the Bay Area. And what we're going to be doing is working with the halibut. That's what I have right here. Our ingredients are a little bit of olive oil, some lemons, bell peppers. I'm going to be using toothpicks and then we have some bacon. And then afterwards, we're gonna use some of my dipping sauce. So what we do is start off with the bacon, and this bacon's been cooked a little bit already. You can see it already has some color to it. And all we're gonna do is take pieces of the halibut, wrap it in the bacon, and if you have a long piece like this, you can fold it in half a little bit, but we're just gonna wrap it, go all the way around it, and then just take a toothpick. 
That's it. So we get a bunch of pieces, got some nice halibut here. And you notice the bacon's already been cooked a little bit. Just because this fish is going to cook so fast, we don't want to wait for the bacon to have to get fully cooked. So we'll just go ahead and do this. Just wrap this. I got one more to do here with the bacon. Before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and add my olive oil to the pan. Don't need a lot of olive oil or any oil in here because you're going to get lots of oil right off the bacon. So the last one, just go ahead and wrap this up. Take that bacon, go all the way around it. Not only is the bacon going to help with the cooking, but it's also going to add a lot of flavor to this dish. Okay, so this is how it looks. Okay, at this point we have the bacon all wrapped around the halibut. It's all ready to go. All you're going to do is just take some lemon. Can't do a fish dish without lemon or lime. Put a lemon all over the fish. And now we'll just drop it in our pan. This oil's hot, so you don't want to toss it too fast. There you go. Just let these cook for a few minutes. And what we're going to also have with this dish is we're going to lay this on a bed of brown rice and then I have some vegetables here. And I'm just going to add these to the pot. If you had you know, a couple of burners, you could do the vegetables on the side. And the brown rice is all ready to go. I made that up last night and all I had to do today is just heat it up. Just keep moving these around. Like I said, the bacon is just about all completely cooked. So this is only going to take a couple of minutes to cook the fish up. Okay, now that our fish is almost done, I just want to add a little heat to the vegetables. I don't want to, you know, cook them too much. So I'm going to take all our vegetables and all it is is bell peppers, different colored bell peppers, just in little slices. I'm just going to just grill it for a little bit for a short time. Not going to add any more oil to it. We already have a little bit of olive oil in there and we got all that natural oil from the bacon. Okay, this is all ready to go here. Just looks beautiful. You just smell the bacon and the fish together. That's a really nice thing about halibut. You know, it's just like, especially this, this halibut we get up in the Bay Area, it's, it really absorbs all the flavors of whatever you add to it. Not quite as much as like a red snapper or a real white fish, but these halibut, they really absorb the flavor. You can make them anything you want to be. With this bacon, it really tastes good. So take the, the heat off here. This is our brown rice. I'm just going to go ahead and move our fish over right on top of the brown rice. Add the vegetables. I really like the vegetables. It, you know, not only is it healthy for you, but it just adds a lot of color to the plate. It looks really nice. Just a beautiful little simple dish to do right here. Pull one of the toothpicks out. And just as a capper, take one of my sauces this particular one is a sweet and spicy. Find it at your local supermarket or on our website. And we'll just kind of drizzle that right across. That's a delicious dish. Not only is this nice and healthy for you, the fish, the vegetables, the brown rice, but it's going to be a delicious dish too. A little bite. Mm. That is just perfect. Very simple recipe to do. Get more ideas on how to cook up fish. Visit my website, pick up one of my cookbooks, and make sure you pick up our different sauces. Remember, all the sales from all my food products, the sauces, the fish batter, all go to benefit my youth foundation. Well, let's get back on the water and show you more exciting action right here on Sport Fishing.
This week's Boat Bio is brought to you by Magic Metal Jigs and B-52 Bucktail Jigs. The new Huck Finn is a sport fisher operates daily out of Emeryville Sport Fishing up in the Bay Area. She's a big boat, has plenty of deck space for fishing, and carries a large supply of live bait. There's plenty of walk around space, and the galley is large enough to get the anglers out of the weather. The wheelhouse is equipped with all the modern electronics for fish finding, navigation, and communications. At Emeryville Sport Fishing, you can make your reservation and book your trip aboard the new Huck Fin today. We had a great time fishing up here out of Emeryville. It's always fun coming up here and fishing with Jay aboard the new Huck Finn and his deckhand Dave. In today's episode, like you saw, we just stayed inside the bay, drifting for those halibut and those stripers. It was really awesome fishing. If you've never booked a trip up here, I really recommend you book a trip with Jay. Call Emeryville Sport Fishing and try your hand at fishing up here. It's just lots of fun. Well, I'm Dan Hernandez, hoping you enjoyed this week's episode of Sport Fishing. And I hope you join us again next week as we go looking for more of the best in sport fishing.